After 9-11 happened, like a couple years later, somebody in our community actually like reported us to the FBI. They said, you know, suspected terrorist activity. And so these FBI agents came and like interviewed us at our house. And um, I kind of stood like outside of my bedroom with the door open and I kind of like peeked in and listened to them and they asked a lot of questions. They were very, very kind, very respectful. Um, and I remember like being kind of nervous. I even had like a couple of nightmares where police came and took my parents away. So I think even though it wasn't like that significant of a thing, it was a little bit nerve, made me nervous. Um, so after they left, my mom had a conversation with me that um, I think shaped a little bit of the direction of my life. She said, Satine, I know that what you saw here today was a little bit scary. I know like it was kind of weird having them come here and ask us a lot of these questions. Um, but people are really afraid right now after, you know, like referring to what happened on 9-11. So people are very scared. Um, and so that's why they're, they're kind of going out of their way to just check everything because they want to make sure that doesn't happen again and um, people are going to say mean things to you that might be unkind um, but don't ever ever hate america this country has been so incredibly generous to us and what america means is so much greater than everything that you see right now this country is a land for immigrants and i don't want you to ever hate america i want you to take care of it the way that it, america took care of us but I remembered that and it became a theme in my life. You know, as I went into high school and I went to college and it, it wasn't always about misrepresentation of Islam. It was in maybe another area, but I think a lot of my purpose comes from that. So um, this is me taking care of my country the best way that I know how. And sometimes that means saying that I am an American when maybe somebody else says, questions that. So. Ultimately, I think Ummah is about the Muslim community, but as an American Muslim, I believe in an, a greater community of people of color that all come here to call themselves American. So this exhibition is very, very meaningful to me. UMA is part of the ACME initiative. Um, it takes place in our lab space. And this is the first of the lab exhibitions to really engage with our local community. So these, we're working with Salt Lake City, members of the Salt Lake City community who happen to be Muslim to design and conceptualize the entire space. UMA means um, the collective community of Muslims. So a lot of, some, a really big misconception is that Muslims are very alike but they actually transcend borders. So Muslims come from all different backgrounds, ethnicities, they speak many different languages, um, they have different identities, they have different cultures, different foods, etc. Um, so Ummah is the collective community of people who are Muslim and their ties to one another is religion. So it's actually a beautiful concept because it unites people past, past the things that divide them. We love the Utah Museum of Fine Arts. I remember coming here when I was a kid and for them to approach us and say, hey, we are thinking of this idea. We have an Acme lab. We have fourth graders that come in and they get to have this interactive experience and really have a love for art and different cultures or different themes within the exhibit or within the museum. So we were sold right from the get go. We just we couldn't pass up even if we wanted to. And they've been great to us. We know that every fourth grader in Salt Lake County will have the chance to come through this museum exhibit. Um, and, you know, we talk about how when we were in fourth grade, when we went on a field trip, there wasn't anything representing Muslims that we could walk through. So this is like a very, it's a very significant moment for us when, you know, we grew up in front of um, TV that said, you know, Red Terror Alert Day. That was the attribution to Islam and Muslims, but now they get to have an experience that's positive. And I think that is different and it's new and it's in Utah. Um, so I think it's a blessing for the Emerald Project to be involved with ACME in this exhibition. And we're, we're so grateful. For the pillar section, obviously we know what the five pillars of Islam are. So the key is to find pieces that fit the, the pillar um, and not build the pillar in a way that fits the piece. So uh, we went back to the fundamentals. So what is the first pillar? The first pillar is Shahada, what you recite when you convert to Islam. What piece would best 
capture what this pillar is about. Um, and we try to engage the community a little bit with some of the pillars. So for Salah, which is the second pillar, um, that's the pillar that obligates each Muslim to pray five times a day. Uh, we wanted to represent uh, Muslims in the community, so we had some young, younger our younger Muslims, some of the kids in our community who actually are able to recite it correctly, uh, record those prayers so you can actually listen to them. Um, for the Ramadan pillar, which is uh, Siam, we had our team actually come in and, and paint paint these clocks that represent um, from dawn to dusk, which is when we fast for the month of Ramadan. Um, but it was that one was a little bit more of like, you know, we get to be a little bit more involved with that pillar and paint it and decorate it and design it. Um, so they have it's a combination of finding the right piece to, to meet the pillar and also um, engaging the community. Uh, the community section is really, really beautiful to me because it's literally different people within Salt Lake, within Utah, within different backgrounds who contribute things that represent Islam to them, whether it's their own little handheld Quran or a bracelet or a masbaha. Um, I, I think it's great that they can literally be a part of the exhibit. Even if they're coming through, they still have an opportunity to fill out the paper and bring something later on, so they don't really get to miss the boat on participating. And the other part of the exhibit that I absolutely love is um, the Quran we have under the glass because, you know, no matter everything else going on in the world, me as a Muslim, I know that is my source. That is the book, that is the faith that I go back to at the end of the day, and that is my truth. And that's why it's in the center of the exhibit because that is the center of our faith. That is the pillar that strengthens us and, and holds us together. If I have a message to share with newcomers to the museum or someone who's maybe never met a Muslim or has, has had very little interaction with Islam and Muslims, um, I would say that it is a completely safe space. Um, the goal is not for you to walk away with this understanding or, you know, one, two, three bullet points as much as it is to um, hold, this, hold this space in your mind that Islam is something, you may not know that something and that's okay, but know that, that it is something that um, may not necessarily be represented in the media. There are things Islam is and there are things Islam is not. We're using this space to showcase that and separate what Islam is from ideology, separate what Islam is from culture. So it's okay to come here, it's okay to walk away with questions, it's okay to come here and maybe not even change your mind. but. The point is that we want to make sure that everybody feels welcome um, and hopefully you can attend some of our dialogues and programming so that we can engage in a deeper conversation.